was Wednesday at 2 p.m. when Michelle Stedler got the call. Another body washed up on shore. I accompanied her to the scene of the crime, Del Monte Beach in Monterey. It didn't take long before we found what we were looking for. And we'll see what we've got here. Is this a common occurrence, finding dead sea otters or getting calls that there are um, dead sea otters? We get them once, like on average, maybe once a week, twice a week. For most people, finding a dead sea otter would be a disturbing experience. But for Michelle, unfortunately, it's nothing new. As the senior research assistant at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, one of Michelle's duties is to work as an otter coroner. So this year seems to be a, a pretty high um, year for mortalities in sea otters, and I don't remember the number we're at right now. It's, I think, over almost 200 for the year. So we're going to take this back, we'll put it in our freezer, and then it'll go up to California Department of Fish and Game. And Melissa Miller and her group up there will actually do the necropsy and figure out what they can from this animal and try to um, determine a cause of death to some degree on it. So anyway, not a happy ending for this guy. It's a difficult situation. California sea otters are dying at an alarming rate. Roughly 10% of the counted population won't live through the year. This is 10 times greater than the annual recorded deaths in the Alaskan sea otter population. Dr. Dave Jessup was one of the first wildlife veterinarians in the U.S. He's been studying California sea otters more than half of his 30-year career. Jake, come here, buddy. Oh. The scientific explanation of what a sea otter is is that it's a mink-like animal that lives in the ocean. Other people have called them a uh, chainsaw with a fur coat on. They're a really intelligent animal with a short attention span that has to eat a lot of food and is living kind of on the edge of its ability to survive in the ocean. Morgan. Hey, buddy. Sea otters are, are a key species. They're a sentinel species, and so they're more helpful than other species in understanding the health of marine environments. Sea otters are like canaries in a coal mine. If sea otters are dying, it points to problems with California's coastal waters. I've been studying sea otters since about 1998. For an ecologist, they're really interesting to work with. They have very interesting behavior, their interactions with other species, um, and the, their effect on the sort of the, the community structure um, make them really fascinating. For the last several years, biologists like Tim Tinker have been monitoring the California sea otter population. The numbers aren't encouraging. We found that the, really the big difference between this population and other populations that are growing is adult females are dying more frequently than, than they should be. So the question really is what is killing prime-aged adult females that, that should not be dying? Over the last decade, any significant growth in the California sea otter population has ceased. When habitat is available, as it is in California, a healthy sea otter population can grow up to 18% in a year. Once, sea otters flourished from Japan northward all along the Pacific Coast Rim and south to Baja, Mexico. Sea otters had been hunted extensively throughout the North Pacific for their fur. And in 1911, they were finally protected under the International Fur Seal Convention. But at that point, the Californian otter was thought to be extinct. A small remnant population was rediscovered uh, in the late 1920s, early 1930s uh, in the Big Sur coastline, which at that time was, was essentially um, inaccessible. And all the animals today in California are descended from those approximately 50 individuals. In 1977, the California sea otter was listed as threatened on the endangered species list, and their population began a slow recovery. In the mid-1990s, scientists became alarmed when that growth stopped, and in some years, fell. This year's count is just under 2,800, only slightly more than it was in 1994. Today, their geographic range is limited to a stretch of coastline between Half Moon Bay and Santa Barbara. Their numbers are so low, a single event, like an oil spill, could wipe out the California sea otter forever. 
we probably have more just raw data on sea otters than almost any other marine mammal you can think of. The challenge is putting all that information together, trying to understand the factors that are limiting recovery of this population and coming up with answers that make sense. When I do the front, I'll try and move the hitch over. We're going to work the whole area here from right near the harbor, maybe all the way out past the end of the peninsula. Um, just looking for targets that are sleeping. Uh, to understand how sea otters die, it's critical to understand how they live. That's where Jack Ames and his team come in. We're real good at catching otters, but we can't catch them if they're not sleeping. We're going to catch them, and if they're the proper age and sex, we'll bring them back to the aquarium. It's looking pretty good. The, uh, the conditions are good so far. We have a good sized group, about looks easily uh, 20, 25 animals. To catch a sea otter, divers sneak up from below, carrying a specially designed net trap. Success is dependent on stealth. One of the biggest improvements that has come along in this uh, catch otter technology through the 40 years that they've been working on it is the use of a 100% rebreather because you can get near the animals and make no bubbles whatsoever and it increased our capture percentage from like 30% to maybe 80%. Jack warned me that a captured sea otter can be a dangerous handful. Once you get them in the bag, uh, of course, they're not happy about that at all, and uh, they have real powerful jaws and can do a lot of damage. And they'll lunge at you, and if they can get to you, they can do some real damage to your skin and bones. From here, otters are taken to the Monterey Bay Aquarium for examination. They're going to take a blood sample, and then they're going to uh, instrument, and they're going to implant a VHF radio transmitter, and then a small time depth recorder. And then they'll also uh, apply flipper tags. That whole thing will only take about 25 minutes. Uh, then they're going to um, inject them with a reversal, which wakes them up. And I'll pick them up and take them back to the kelp bed we capture them at and release them. This process allows scientists to collect extremely detailed information on the animal. Sadly, most of these otters will not live out their life expectancy of 12 to 14 years. He's a big guy for seven years old. When a sea otter dies, Melissa Miller steps in. It's her job to examine all of the dead sea otters that are brought in and determine the cause of death. So uh, what we're going to do here is just start the process of a, a detailed postmortem examination, which in the world of veterinary medicine, it's not called, a, called an autopsy because autopsy, by definition, means examination of self. And we're here examining an otter. so. The, the veterinary term for what we're doing is a necropsy. The cause of death in this case appears to be a shark bite, but other factors that led to his demise could be hiding just beneath the surface. So um, there's an interesting hint on this guy. He has algae on his tail. That doesn't jibe with just getting hit by a shark because this tells you he's not, he's not been grooming. This is the classic story of sea otters. Is quite often the obvious is hiding things that are really critically important. Otters that die from some kind of traumatic event like sharks, boats, that kind of thing, tend to have brain inflammation. And one of the most common causes of that inflammation in otters is infection by single-celled parasites called protozoa. For scientists, the cause of this brain infection has been a central question. The answer appears to be quite complex. There's all kinds of different things that kill various sea otters, but the, the the common connection between those things is that many of them seem to have connections back to land and are potentially getting into the ocean through uh, wastewater, such as runoff. Um, and this includes chemical pollutants, such as DDT. It includes biological pollutants, such as parasites and bacteria. So it's this common connection of things coming from the land getting into the ocean and either directly or indirectly impacting sea otter health. Dr. Miller has found a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii in 40 to 60 percent of the dead otters that she examines. One of its primary sources is quite surprising. 
Toxoplasma gondii is found in cat feces, and its eggs can be transported from land to water by flushing cat litter down the toilet. So this is one muscle cell that used to be a muscle cell, and now you can pretty much see it's a bag of parasites. In this case, what we can say from this tissue is the animal was infected with toxoplasma. It doesn't mean it died from it, but we know it's infected with it. Scientific research can help us to understand the problem of otter death, but it'll take more action in the form of public education and legislation to save the California sea otter. It was sort of a neat moment because I'm, I'm there in the aquarium with the kids, the kids are upset, and I thought, there is something I can do. I can learn about this, I can try to see if there's something we can do about it. In the summer of 2005, a family's annual trip to the Monterey Bay Aquarium sparked just such a change in public policy. The people who work there really told us kind of about the sea otters, told us how they were dying. And then I was like, Dad, you, we have to do something about the sea otters. State Assembly member Dave Jones co-authored a bill that requires a label on cat litter bags that warns users not to flush it down the toilet. The new law, which took effect in early 2007, provides funding sources for additional research, including adding a checkoff box on state income tax forms for voluntary donations. The bill also increases fines for activities that harm wild sea otters, like dumping pollutants. As important as it is, linking the Toxoplasma gondii parasite to otter deaths only provides part of the answer to the mystery of what's killing sea otters. Holy cow, look at that one up there. Yeah. Up there. It's a, a multiple set of causes. You can look at pollutants and then say, okay, now what kinds of things can we do? Is it holding runoff, street runoff? Is it holding farm runoff? Is it managing our sewage differently? Is it managing our harbors differently? Is it worrying about septic systems? You know, those kinds of things all have somewhat different solutions, but they focus you on a problem. Preserving California's sea otters presents a complex dilemma one that will require action on many fronts. This is a commitment to which scientists will remain dedicated for as long as it takes. My biggest hope for the future is that within the next four or five years, we make enough progress on what's causing the deaths of large numbers of sea otters that we already start to see the population coming up. I'd like to see them up to where we don't have to worry about them so much anymore.